So this is my final year tech project. I'm just going to go through quickly how it was made, some of the components, features, some things that went wrong, and then show you some footage of riding around after it's finished. It started as a kid's 20 inch mountain bike. It was important that I got on with front suspension. And I really only needed that for the steering. I also used it to see how big the final thing would be and then worked on getting it a little bit smaller. This is the final design. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It has a mainly steel but some plywood chassis. It also has a fiberglass battery cover and electronically removable motors so that the back wheel can freewheel. The handlebars have been extended on the bike to allow for standing riding. The front brake has been upgraded. There is no rear brake, but their motors do supply some electronic braking. It has about 10 centimeters of ground clearance, which allows you to go over most speed humps and do some light off-roading, but not much else. This key turns on everything, including the relay controller for the motors, but no power gets to the motors yet. I use 20 inch wheels and front suspension, so it is quite stable. There are some air intakes there to cool the electronics on the inside. Between these two uprights is the modified servo tester throttle. Under these two covers are two 12 amp hour 6S LiPo batteries, which is equivalent to about five or 600 watt hours, which is about 14 miles on this, so it's not very efficient. The balance connectors go to these voltage alarms. Behind these two fans are 80 amp brushless speed controllers for RC planes and they are each connected to a 6374 192kV brushless motor and with the electronics in here at the moment at peak they're each allowed to draw about 25 kilowatts. however on the flat at full speed they only draw 900 watts each. The front light is powered off the main batteries with a step down voltage regulator. This switch controls a linear actuator that pushes and pulls the motors on and off of the wheel. This allows you to roll down hills without using any power. You can also push it if something goes wrong. By looking underneath you can see that the motors are covered in grip tape to allow better traction to the wheel and the linear actuator connects to the motor assembly which pivots on a rod above the deck. This is what it looks like under the fiberglass. On the right you can see the watt meter and the relay. On the left you can see two speed controllers before I decided to take them out from inside the fiberglass because they were overheating. After they failed from overheating, I replaced them. Then they failed because they caught fire. And then I decided passive airflow wasn't enough, so I stuck them on the outside with massive fans on, and I haven't had a problem since. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on, the key. And then this, with uh, Bluetooth, turns on the main relay. You can hear a beep. Also turns on these fans that cool the speed controllers. I've loosened the wheel off so it's freewheeling. So those motors don't do anything at the moment. But then if I press it on. One downside is the motors do wear out the tire.
On the flat, the top speed is about 32 miles an hour, and it draws about 2 kilowatts then. And up a decently steep hill at 20 miles an hour, it draws about 1.5 kilowatts. And if you ride it conservatively, you do get a range of about 14 miles, which is not much at all compared to most e-bikes with that size battery.